start with the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> census and also the household median income for Central Lake, we kind of fit in this um, formula as far as how much we're eligible for a grant through the USDA. The nice part of the grant is whatever we get, we're not eligible, we don't have to pay it back. It's not a loan, it's actually truly a grant. Um, they took all those things into consideration, they come up with a formula, and um, kind of on the onset I knew we were going to score up pretty good on it, but they told us that we are actually eligible for 55% of a match grant. So whatever the car costs, and I think I've got the car spec'd out at about $34,700. The grant will pay 55% of that, so um, $35,000 car only costs the village $15,000. So, um, And over the last three years, we've been saving money or setting money aside um, just in preparation that the car would be, need to be replaced. So um, by March 1st, we'll have almost 15000 in that account. So basically, our part of the grant is covered, or at least have that part set aside for it. So then the rest of it is paid for by um, the USDA grant. When I talked to the guy from Traverse City the other day, um, all those things he takes into consideration to find out our formula, he also takes into consideration to find out where we score out. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but he said we scored 95 points on the grant application out of 110 points possible. So I asked him, I said, well, what does that mean? He's like, well, you'll be at the top of the list when the grants come out as far as the distribution of it. So it looks just really good. So um, the last couple weeks we talked about, for the last couple months, we talked about just a pre-application point to get us to this point. Um, then now that we have to do is, the reason for the meeting is to talk about it to make sure that the board is still on ready to go with it or you know want to consider doing that. At this point, I filled out some of the paperwork and there's only two more things I have to do. One is that we have to give up meetings for this meeting, um, showing that we had a public hearing on it. Um, the second is there's a short application part that we have to fill out, just start some um, general questions or whatever. Once that's all done, we actually submit it back to Traverse City and that's the actual application. Um, and even if that goes through, um, there still may be a chance we get it, we don't get it. It depends on whether the federal grant, depends on what kind of comes through and how much gets dispersed and how it gets divvied up and stuff like that. But I feel pretty confident we'll, we'll score pretty good on that. So best case scenario, if we do get the grant, it's eligible probably January 1st. Um, you know, worst case is that we don't get it. Um, and if, if we don't, then we're not out anything because the money that we already have set aside for the car just continues to stay in that account and every year we'll continue to probably throw some more money for that way. Um, normally our cars will last about eight to ten years. Um, and our car is probably nine years old right now, so probably do we get replaced here pretty soon. I mean, we can probably squeeze another couple of years out of it, but if we're eligible to get a grant currently that'll pay 55% of it, it would be smart to jump on that. Um, because unfortunately, we don't know if the grant will be available next year. We don't know if it will be available two years from now. 
or three years at the latest, latest as far as whether we'll be eligible or not for that. So, so that's kind of what we're doing is we're actually just discussing it. We're talking about, you know, if the grant does go through, the, the village's responsibility is $15,700 or something like that is what we've got figured out. And it's a brand new car with brand new equipment. Everything's brand new in it, so we don't have to worry about transferring everything over from the other car, except for a couple of the radios. Um, the nice part about it is if we do get the grant and we are eligible to equip it with all new stuff, then we just decommission the old car, we strip it down, and then we can sell that. And I've had a discussion with a couple of board members. We'll probably just put that money back into that account for the next car because, you know, eight to ten more years, we'll have to buy another one. So we're already ahead of the game as far as um, doing that. Um, since I've been here, we've only actually started setting money aside about the last three years, so we're kind of behind right now, because if we had to buy a new car in two years, we wouldn't have enough money to buy a $30,000 car with only $15,000 saved up right now. We have to really start taking some money away. So this is a great opportunity to make up for some lost time that we haven't been saving for a new car. And unfortunately, when they bought that car the last time, they figured it would last quite a while, and we never really considered it. So, um, so it's a good program. So, Any question a little bit about... Um, <clears throat> the bidding process or how you come to buy it? <clears throat> well, the, the, the state of Michigan, um, for all police departments in the state of Michigan, the state of Michigan takes on that responsibility to go out and outsource it to, to do the bidding process. And it, it's called my bid process. Um, and the state of Michigan gets the very best price on any car that any police department could buy. And, and as a municipality, we're eligible to get those through the state bid. When Sam bought a truck last year, we got them through the state bid. So we don't have to go out and, you know, try to get a hold of, like, Fox Motors and Grand Travers Motors and do it all the legwork because the state's already done that. Um, and right now, the base price of this car is a $23,000 car. And if you were to buy that on a showroom floor, it's probably about a $32,000 car. So that's how much better we get prices on cars because we don't have to pay the the tax and all that other stuff. Which is kind of good stuff. Sure. I have a quick question. If you get a new car, will it have a video camera on the dash? Well, that's my other part, is I'm going to write a grant um, when this car comes in. Right now we have a camera system in our old car, but it's an old VHS system. And they don't even make parts for it anymore. It's broke. It doesn't really work. But the new one, my goal is to write another grant in order to equip with a the video camera. The video camera for the car is $4,000. Um, and then I'm also going to get body mics for the officers so we can wear them on us. Um, and those are about $900. So somehow I'll either write a grant for both of those or figure out how to get one for each one of those. So the ones for the cars are nice, but then once you get away from the car, it obviously kind of defeats the purpose of having a camera. So. Yeah, but I wouldn't have any problem sticking a $4,000 camera into a new car versus trying to put it into an old car, turn it back a year or two now, and take it back out because the cost of equipping the car is pretty expensive. Quite often it saves quite a bit of money <coughs> by not having to go to court and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's my goal. And there's a, a the tribal grant and there's some other grants that I can go after. And I, if it's one of those, um, the deadline for those are by December. So I kind of didn't want to write a grant for a video camera if we weren't going to have a car to put in it. So. I mean, what's the life expectancy of the vehicle? Um, well, we're, we're able to keep our cars for eight to 10 years, which is a good, most departments. When I work for Annette County, we got rid of cars every three years, um, just because we were putting a lot of miles on. So. Um, and we take good care of our car. I mean, our car is in really good shape, but it's just a matter of, you know, if we can capitalize on a, a grant that will be 55% of it. This car will be all wheel drive, so we can drive it year round versus having a rear wheel drive and having to put away from the national. I was talking to some of the county guys, and they bought, the county has bought some cars that have to have mid grade fuel or higher test fuel than regular. This one will not? No, this is, um, the car that we kind of picked out is, um, it's a Ford Taurus. Um, it's all the right. It's got a small six cylinder. They actually make a twin turbo for it, which is about well, 80 more horsepower, but we don't need that for a small company yet. So, I mean, if we were out on the highway or you know, freeway or something like that, we'd probably need a bigger motor, but this one's perfect for us. So, Which is another, it's a savings of about two to three thousand dollars by having a small motor. <coughs> so, then it gets better gas mileage. It runs basically the fuel that our cars currently run. So. Thank you. 
hope not to vote a comment, no? Somebody must have something to say. Yeah. 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 Is this the regular meeting, Bill, or is this the... This is the real meeting. This is the public hearing. Well, probably it's all week. Prior to the grant, we're required to have a public hearing of 10 days before we actually apply for the grant, which is this kind of a formula. I'll comment a little bit any public comment, but just going over some of the numbers that Scott and I have too. Um, while the cost of the car, our contributions can be 15,736, we're also going to take whichever one of the vehicles, sell it outright, and that's going to also be um, taken away from that cost for us. So we're truly going to be spending slightly less than that once we sell one of them. Sure, and, so. and, and if we get rid of the patrol car, which is probably the best right. thing, because it's the rear drive, you know, right now they're going for about three to five thousand dollars, so we can put so that much more money, money towards it. Yeah, no, no, no. We'll up 10,007, mm -hmm. um, which looks even better in this grant process for us. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think Scott's done real good with this, and it's, it's a bonus for Central Arkansas Plus. I think it's an opportune time to do it because um, you know, there, there are getting to be more grants, there are getting to be fewer and fewer grants available. For well, I think the grant will always be there. For, it's a federal grant, but then it will probably be a smaller amount. More people will probably apply for it, so the chances of probably getting it are probably, I don't know how we'll score out next year versus this year. Public comment? Scott was saying you know, it, it's better than waiting until the day this car dies and then having to pay full retail for uh, yeah. Well, right now, if we were to continue saving like we do, we save about $3,000 per year per car. It takes another five years to save up the money that we would need to buy a new car. So we basically get into a new car now versus waiting five more years. It would be questionable whether our cars would last another five more years. So. You said we would know probably by January 1 whether we're it just depends on what the board wants to do. The board can decide. Once we get the grant, we don't have to spend it right away. We actually have up to five years to spend it if we wanted to. But the unfortunate part about that is once they allocate the amount for the grant, anything above that, if it increases any prices, we eat 100% of all the increased prices. So if the car goes up $1,000 next year, we pay that extra $1,000. If the equipment costs more, or the, the repair costs more, and stuff like that. So it'd be, it'd be kind of, I mean, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it when the grant's over. But I would probably suggest maybe wait until, and Joe and I talked about this as far as, if the grant were to come available in January, maybe wait until March when our new budget comes in line. Because then the money that we have saved this year maybe set a couple, $3,000 more for next year. Or, like I said, take the car and sell it out and then pay that back. So. You know, there, there may be some conditions on availability from the dealers that are from the factory too. Well, yes and no. Most of the time, when the police department, you can't just go buy a police car any time of year. They're only available a certain time of year. From the January to about March or so, when most people order them, and they get delivery before May. By the time May comes around, they're not really available because most people fall off because they don't make a lot of extra. Um, so I would, you know, we'll talk about that as the grant comes available in March. Sorry, I'm sorry, January. We might consider just ordering it. Um, knowing that we have the money and stuff like that, we'll probably take delivery until February when we come with Because it takes at least a good month or so to build the car. So. That, that's what gives us kind of a bonus is we can start into this rather quickly, February or whatever. By the time we take possession of the car, we have to pay the bills or into our budget. So sure. uh, we can start that long. Mm -hmm. And that would make a difference on the last 3000 yeah. whatever, just putting it into 2015-16's budget, yeah. or we're going to wait until we sell the car pay the extra three grand to make up that total fifteen thousand dollars so we're, we're still in the uh, public hearing for a grant for to purchase patrol car. And now we're in a public comment section. <laughs> Any public comment on that? No, no. Okay. All right. I'd ask for a minute motion for the vote. Motion to put it in the second. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Everybody. 
It may not have come out sometimes the way it should have or, or how, but <coughs> it is what it is. But I believe he, he did believe in Central Lake and care about it. So I'm yeah. sure he appreciates that. I think after a period of a couple of years of reflection, when the next election comes up, maybe he'll consider mm -hmm. you know, running for trustee position again and pray for his ideas. But uh, I just wanted him to know that you know, it's appreciated by some people, I think, mm -hmm. uh, what he did. I think we all worked with him long enough to know that he, he had the he had the village's best interests at heart. He may not always come across. I wasn't going to get into that point. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure that he had the village's best interests at heart. Yeah. Any other comment? Public comment? seemed a lot more fair than than just picking on one or one at a time or I think the way you did it is much 
much easier to take. Yeah. It works, and that's the other problem where kind of, if there is truly a problem with it. By having Bob do it once a week, it is kind of a little bit of a problem because people will call and want to talk to him, and you know, I try not to get too much involved because I keep Bob on it, so he's doing everything consistently across the board, so it's not my opinion, his opinion. Um, but sometimes just trying to relay to people, hey, somebody will get back to you, you know, maybe not today, but it's just when Bob comes back. So um, sometimes I have to jump in and call them at least to let them know that we're not forgetting about them or ignoring them. So that's the hard part. So. But I think people still think that somebody's working on this every day of the week, <laughs> for 24 hours a day, but you know, unfortunately we don't have that in our budget to do that. So. But it, it works for a bit. I mean, it keeps them busy. Every week when he comes in, he's got enough to do to keep them busy for that day. So. He's doing a job, I mean. and, and honestly, I don't want him to be busier than that anyways, because that means we have more problems. So. so it's nice, it's kind of a, a happy thing. Mm -hmm. yep. water services. I think I quoted $8,000 for three boards. That bill come back in at $7,200 for the boards. All, all three of the water services have been tapped into the main. Curb stops have been set. One full-time resident has been hooked up to it and has noticed the difference the first day we hooked it up to it, which would be stand up. The difference in uh, uh, water Volume water volume, water quality, all the way around. She said it's just amazing. Good. Hey, Sam, uh, Sam yes. here's visually, that's the uh, plug you gave me. And oh, I'm yeah, I the, kept the plug, yeah. I kept the plug in. The that's water line that goes down to Herrick Street, the 10 inch water line installed in 97, and that's how clean it is still. And you can really tell if you're looking at the lines going into your house, I bet you, and they're that old, I bet you they're not that. I'll pass it around. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I, I just think it's pretty neat. Approximately two months ago, I asked for permission of the Great Frazier Associates to renew the wastewater permit. It has been sent into the EQ, waiting on their approval to see how it goes. That came in at $1,500, which I believe is what I quoted you, and that's what the bill comes to, is $1,500. Halloween, we bought donuts from our local bakery. I bought 360 donuts and I give away 360 donuts. <laughs> First time ever. You didn't need even meet one? No, I didn't. <laughs> we we rented a tent from Keeper Ella. We put a big uh, heater in it. Township on the borrow one of their big kerosene heaters. And I'm telling you what, there was times I had 20, 30 people in that tent at the time. Some of them sat there for 20 minutes at a time. <laughs> they waiting on pictures of, of this. Stuff. They absolutely enjoyed it. It, it was a wonderful thing to use the open space for. <laughs> uh, other than that, pretty typical month. Any questions? Sam, them last two uh, hookups on, on Herrick Street, Aaron, do we have intention to get them done before winter? or is that going to be an Depend, it, what, what I'm waiting on is probably a 30 degree day when it's not snowing. In your season, John? The whole thing. The whole thing. I'm on vacation, remember? <laughs> Anybody in the park? One person in the park till the first of December? Yep. So far. Good. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>
Chip Rubin's who um, found a more uniform way to group them for every account, and you all have a copy of that. It doesn't change any of the bottom numbers, it just makes it easier for everything. Um, and then that was the average to reconcile 10 years or more of the index that never balance. And at the end of the day, a few weeks ago, we um, <coughs>
very noticeable. Uh, there's some new issues beginning to address every week. Seems like there's something new every week that comes up. And I think they're handling it great. I, I hear hardly any grumbling. You know, I'm one that they made clean up too. So. Uh, a couple of bigger issues are still at work and uh, still in progress. And, and everybody really, as, as far as far as Scott's telling me, and everybody is really cooperative. I mean, it's very little problems. Some people require more time, and and some require a little different handling, some help for one thing or another, but they, Bob and, uh, and Scott are both have been just great with uh, helping the people with whatever they can to help them reach their goals, get the thing cleaned up. So that's all I have for that. Uh, communications to Rod? I just want to uh, remind everyone again that now the snow is fresh on the ground, that no <coughs> overnight parking on the streets, uh, so the crew needs to be able to clean the streets off so you can, you know, clean out the cars and everything else going in there. And to set back everything in the yard eight feet from the edge of the road so there's no obstacles, trash cans, you know, basketball hoops or whatever. And finance and personal, well, Joe Bottomley. Yeah, she's a little busier. Um, worked with Ken and, and Rachel there on uh, making the, the budget a little more uniform. Um, and we say that uh, now when you look at the water, the sewer, the, when it says salaries, HSAs, like uh, they are all the same throughout the budget, so they're all uniform. Um, I helped Rachel um, along with working with Rod a little bit and making sure that our communication policy that we've all worked underneath um, for the last two years was actually in writing and as a, um, I believe, a resolution for tonight, was it? Um, and so we will be looking at that later tonight. Um, I also, uh, last month I talked to you guys, uh, or the council, about um, making, looking into consolidation cooperation efforts with the township. Um, so, one of the first things that I did in doing that, I thought, is it doesn't do us a lot of good to put anything together if the group that we are looking to consolidate or work with isn't interested. So my first uh, first task that I thought um, fitting was to go to them and ask them. So I, I spent quite a few hours putting together a presentation for them. Um, you guys all have the presentation in your packets. Um, Bill was there. It was pretty well set that there was no no working with them, they, they didn't feel as though there's any savings for them. Um, so I'm not sure if there's really any other way to go with it. Um, Sam was there, Sam was in support of doing this. What what I actually proposed to them was to try and create a, a committee amongst uh, the two different uh, groups here, or municipalities, to see if there was anything um, in the area of consolidation or cooperation or even a joint effort. Um, and see what them were, and they have no interest in that. So, um, that pretty much got shot right there. So, uh, other than that, that was my fault. So something changes this to the issue. Uh, I, think, I think, you know, I hate to see it be a dead issue. I don't think Sam was wanting to see it a dead issue. Um, I've actually talked with some other groups and some other municipalities who actually said, you know, such like uh, township that they're willing to, maybe there's something we can do with you. That's why let's wait and see where things go here first before we get into it. But, um, you know, I, I think there, there's other people that are seeing value to what could be or, or something. So, um, I definitely, I don't think this should ever be a, a closed subject. Uh, voted here by the people to do what's best for the people, save money, and try to do that, and I think we should continue to do that. So, um, it may not move forward real quickly, it may not move in stride, but I think always keeping it on the back burner and something to look at is, is a value. So, I watched it online, and there was been no support from any town, any township council member at all. Yeah. Sam, well, Sam's, Sam's, yeah, Sam's <laughs> 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 He's the one who brought it up initially. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, so at this point, I'm sure. Yeah.
I, I, I knew pretty much when I met, when I reached about the middle of my presentation to them, and Stan told me that he was sure everybody had read this and asked me how long I'd be, I knew I was done for it. <laughs> unfortunately, I spent about three hours putting this together. There's probably 12 different articles that I put together to create what I wanted on this. So I knew I was done at that time. And, um, but again, like I say, I, I think it's almost always keeping back of our minds. Um, I use like our, we just did a brush pickup in the village um, for everybody. I wanted to talk about that. It is, uh, as I know it went very well in the spring, I'm sure it went good here in the, the fall. How great would that have been if we could have offered that as a joint effort with the township to the entire community? Uh, three days picking up uh, brush out in the township and all that, two days in the village, whatever, and, and taking care of that for the people. Um, so, like I said, I think it's kind of bad that, that it got thrown away so quickly by him, but, um, but I'm not done with it. We can yeah. remain open. We, we, we will do that. Off. Yes, yes. So, um, you may look at a, at a different approach, maybe a, a mutual aid agreement to yeah. start with or something. You know, maybe that would uh, be a way to start it, anyways. But Thank I, you don't, for, I don't see anything happening. No, I, I, I definitely think there's a value to it, and, and, I, and I won't get up on it. I mean, I, I see some good things happening there. So. Yeah, we're one. You know, if not help, maybe it, it enlighten them something <coughs> they'll look at later themselves, even. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a change in leadership and intelligent. I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, that's that's what I had um, for so that. Good for him on tonight. <laughs> He's got a vacation hat on. Okay. No, that's that's what I had. Okay. Thank you. Right. I'll talk to Layla. Um, last month. Uh, Folks had asked me to talk to the DNR regarding uh, procuring a new trust fund grant for Donaldson Field tennis courts and the playground. Um, I did get a hold of the director of grants, Christy Bayes, um, regarding if we could start a second trust fund grant, even though the waterfront trust fund grant is still in the works. Um, Joe, where are we at on I, I, the, I was going to speak to that. We on just the disputed repairing ownership at the North we just of the Lake. That's the specifically what that. she said to me. Yep, we she just received uh, a packet on that from the lawyers um, that they will be taking that into the court system. Um, Rachel, I believe, uh, is going to be in touch with them here this next week to make sure that what, what documents we have to sign or if these are just our copies for sure. Um, again, we have proven that it is a needed piece of property. Um, and to the village. To, while that it is a deeded piece of property, not necessarily to the village, we now have to go through the process of that. One of the things that they asked us in, in the, um, from the lawyers was to document any of the work that has been done in that area. It was <coughs> years that it was done, any monies or grants that were applied to it from before. Did our DPW do the work? Was there other, so there's still workings, but they are moving it forward, and I believe that we're hoping to, within the month, submit to the courts. Um, and apply for, um, I'm trying to remember the word, what they call it. Um, it's a quiet title action, but it's, um, I can't think of it straight up, tip my tongue. Um, adverse possession or something in that area, I think. I, I can't remember the word exactly, but. Um, that's the most I know about it right now. Well, based on that, she wants to know so that way we can get her an executed project agreement. Um, she wants to be kept in the loop on that. Um, she told me that there'd be no negative impact if we can continue moving forward with that. Um, if it does stall up in the courts, what would happen is I went back through for the grant on our old grant cycle here, and on page six here, part B, compliance with the program procedure, we'd be out of compliance. Um, we lose 10 points, which is 2% total loss of points for out of a total of 530 points. So it would, it would not be that detrimental um, if we wanted to start pursuing a trust fund grant for Donaldson Field, start getting the ball in motion now because March 1st is when we have to have that application in. And I think this application would be uh, a lot easier because I don't think there's anybody disputing that we own that land, I, I, I hope. Um, so with that in mind, 
uh, it'll be a smaller grant, and <coughs> we're going to have cooperation with the school, the right. township, and we've already done the one that we should well, be shape. Regardless where where we end up in the property dispute, that is only a small portion of our existing grant. We're still going to move forward with the rest of that mm -hmm. plant. Um, the property down around in the Colberry and the campground and the bathhouse. That, that's one very small part that we can amend our grant at any time right. to either include or exclude it. Um, the recommendations from them at the time when as I was working with Ken with this was to not do anything and make a, a change to the <coughs> application just to go back and have to change it again later if you once we did a player. So they, they figured we would be better to wait at least do the, the winter, get everything solid and, and set before we went forward. So. so you're talking modification on page well, all right, I'll go worry about that later. Yeah. Okay, we can remember the exact page on it. All right. Well, that'll be finalized by spring <coughs> what? Is that what you're saying? I, in, in my opinion, it would be. I mean, and and would I guess it, it would have to come back to the council to say that, you know, this is taking longer than we thought. It's not moving the way we wanted. We're just going to let's move that portion of the grant project off the table for now and get the other part going. Um, we have that option to do that. That we don't have to have it modified by. We, we modify the grant itself or the grant application, um, which I believe uh, Christy was one of those that's, that's not a, a hard thing to do, but modifying it now so we can move forward and then later say, oh, when we track do we have that, we track now we want to move it back. But we can modify it in 2015 if we. I, yeah, move. I believe so. so I believe so we can. Do, yeah, I believe we've got five years the same as and the, the other grants pretty much to. Do this. They just want us to sign some paperwork saying we're going to take that grant and move forward. So, because if we decide not to, that's free money for other people who want grants. Yeah, other stuff goes back in the house. And so, um, it makes sense that they'd like that to move forward and either secure or release the, the money. So. Mm -hmm. Sam and I for uh, snow removal for the road and the 
sidewalk. <coughs> uh, the, the snowblower attachments for the Kubota tractor. We have two old snowblowers. We've cobbled them together, and we have one. Um, the tractor we're currently using is a uh, 2000 Kubota, 14 years old. Um, and as it happened last year, we had a heavy snowfall, and the snowblower broke down. Um, I don't have any doubt that it's going to break again. We know it. And it's going to happen on a Saturday when <laughs> the nut sales is, doesn't have that part. And we're going to be socked in, and that's our only snowblower. So we thought, okay, let's get a new snowblower on this. So then we started saying, well, we have a 14-year-old tractor here. Do we want to, if we get a new snowblower, what's going to happen? Or if no tractor is going to break, we're going to be chasing good money after bad. And also keep in mind that uh, Sam can fix just about anything, but the time he's working on the tractor, he's not getting his snow removal. So we're paying to do something else and not remove snow. So you've got to put that cost in there, cost of the parts, and that sort of thing. Um, we are scheduled for a new one in two years. We, four years. Uh, 2016. Over tried in 2017, so three more years. All right, I'll, I'll split the difference. Um, so, we're, our, I had a schedule on that. Um, so, we started looking at tractors. We got three bids, and three bids are in front of you. Um, the best bid that we thought, Sam and I, was from Gannett Sales um, for another Kubota. Uh, the second one from the same place, uh, let's see, it was in New Holland, but the difference being the cap. The Kubota had a hard cap on it that was standard with the tractor. With the New Holland, you'd have to buy an add-on piece, and anytime you add something that's not factory, doesn't fit right, and it's quite a bit louder. So we looked at that. Um, the third bid was from Work and Play, and that was the John Deere. Um, that came at 29. So we decided on the Kubota for the low price of 24,500. That included an $8,500 trade-in for the 2000 uh, tractor. Um, is $8,000 for a trade-in? Is that? Are we getting the wool pulled over our eyes? Well, if you looked at the trade in price, the price was $5,000. So $8,500 versus $5,000 is a difference of 43%. So there's a huge swing. So I went online to see what, what, what's going on. Um, the problem is that there's many styles. You've got a soft cap, you've got a mower deck, you've got turf tires. You can't really say that the Kubota that we're trying to trade in, you can't compare apples to apples. Um, I found one in Ohio. That was uh, they were offering it for seven thousand nine hundred, uh, but again it had a motor deck and stuff. Yeah, the closest one I found was in Rockwell, Texas, but it had a brush hog on it, so and no cap for eight thousand eight hundred fifty dollars. So I think we're doing very well on the trade-in for the Kubota. Um, bearing in mind it is running concurrently, so I don't think there's much trade-in on a non-working track. Um, as for funding, our fund balance for equipment is, uh, if I'm reading this correctly, the, what, uh, let's see, 195000 so we have enough in fund balance. Well, Joe, you're in charge of finance. Do we have enough in fund balance? Uh, starting the 2015 year, yeah. um, which, would be March, which would be March um, uh, 1st, would be $201,000 in, right. in our uh, uh, equipment. And, right. and at that point, we would only be moving up two years. Right, right now, we're at $181,000. 181, okay. I got one. As we said, right now, until our budget gets closed up. Because yeah. that number won't change until then. Right. And if you also notice, we receive a $6,980 <coughs> discount for government, Rob? Yeah, the government uh, discount. $8,800. So you're, you're actually receiving $15,000 off this tractor, so it's actually a $40,000 Kubota. So, and the Kubota is the one that you... Well, Kubota is what we got right now. Right. The Kubota is a full, like Rob said, welded can. No, no bowl on anywhere. I mean, this can is AM, FM radio, air conditioning, cruise control, you name it, it's got it. 
It's a beautiful tractor. It's a beautiful tractor. And we're, we're and, and I'm like Rob. Rob and me had sat down and talked, and we knew the first, first thing that's going to happen if it snows nine inches tonight, and I put that blower on that Kubota and take it up down, I'm going to twist the guts right out of it like we've been doing. But that's a fact. Your trade in is for our existing tractor, one blower, and the broom? I'm going to get both blowers. Cause it, but it's one blower. Okay. But we, the new, the, the new style blowers don't fit are totally different than the old blower that they have now. So they might just well get both parts of it. And then uh, I see here on the broom also, so you, you don't we have to use that the broom? Okay. How long would this, how long would you project this tractor to last? Well, for right now I'm going to project our, our old Kubota. 14 years. Our old Kubota. <laughs> our old Kubota is actually 15 years old. Because we bought it a year new. Is this one comparable so, to size wise? It's it's a little bit bigger than the other one. Well, than the old one. You know, it's got more horsepower. Still go through the same ones? Oh yes, the snowblower is still the same size. Okay. The only thing we did is we went ahead and put two inch wings on both sides of it so we got the sidewalks wider than the wheelbase because we went with turf tires. Turf tires are wide enough the width of the tractor. So we had to buy the extensions on the snowblower. If we if <coughs> In 15 years, I'll say like Robert, that's the life expectancy right now. That's the first one we've ever had, and we got 1,748 hours out of it. It still runs. And this one's diesel, too. Yep. And if the old one's worth, like I said, 8,500 bucks trade, and I thought we treated that machine very well for 15 years to get that much trade in. years, it's only about 1,600 bucks a year to get a shop rate machine. Yeah, to get a 16, to own it, mm -hmm. to use it. And this, this, new machine, this new machine comes through with a bucket, which we don't have. <coughs> you can spend $1,600 a year in labor. You'll, you'll, you'll find the We've been borrowing the township, so we get in a tight spot where we need a little tractor with a bucket. I understand. We can which spend just hasn't been an issue either, because they said, go ahead and get it. We can spend $1,600 a year in labor, DPW, just working on it. We put $5,000 into that tractor two years ago when the transmission went out of it. You can take it right back out, you could go back out, and it might last 10 more years. How many, how long does the level warranty comes on these ones, Sam? Uh, I think they're all the same here. They're all the same, yeah. I, they are the, the Kubota may be a three year. Okay. They may all be three year warranties on the tractor for municipal use. So don't quote me on that. They're all standard, whatever they are. Right here, we we'll make a motion to buy that. I make a motion to buy that. Which one? The Kubota. Four. Uh, Twenty-four fifty. Twenty-four thousand four hundred fifty dollars. Second. Motion made by Rod and seconded by Denise Battery. Purchased from Gimmick Sales. Kubota, and the price of twenty-four thousand four hundred and fifty dollars.
Um, a little bit, yeah. Now, basically, from what I understand with it, I'm talking with Corey. Um, basically, this is just an amendment. Um, they didn't use the monies in other areas that they were budgeted for the $8,500, um, but they did start to spend a little more in their flower area. So this is just going to take away from their community projects and add it to their area flower beds. Um, it's, it's not any, any money to their budget, it's just moving it from one line to the other, but then, yeah, um, I, I, there's, there's no addition or anything to this, like I said, it's just moving it from one line item that we'll have to use into another. Uh, I'll make a motion that we adopt resolution number 8 of 2014, a resolution uh, for the DEA budget amendment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Now, while, while we're on this, um, I talked with Corey a little bit about this earlier, too, and knowing um, in the future, as we go forward and, and see, um, for many years, we spent, the village has spent 3000 3500 up to $4,200 at one time, I believe I went back and see on taking care of the flower beds in all downtown. A couple of years ago, we went to a um, contract and just made it a one set fee, $3,000, payable half up front, half on the, at the end of the season. Um, since then, in the creation of the DDA, we <coughs> said, all right, now the DDA is going to be responsible for that. And in doing so, part of their 20000 was then allocated to doing that, or their, their budget, I should say, not their 20000 part of their budget would then be allocated to take care of flower beds. We run into a problem this year, and it was an oversight. It's, there are three flower beds within the village that do not fall in the <coughs> And unfortunately, the DBA can't spend money outside of the DBA district. So um, in the future, what I've talked with Corey about, I talked with Ken about it, um, was to continue since the village would normally take care of the flower beds and spend that money, that we continue to spend the $2,500 to the DBA for taking care of them. But we take $500 of that and use it for the three that are outside of the DBA area and contracting the same person. But I think it's something we have to work with the DBA and the people that they have set up doing the flowers to make sure that that all meshes together nicely. Um, Corey received the contract that I wrote for Ms. Bodenbender uh, a couple years ago. so. Uh, just going forward, keep that in the back of our minds. So that would be my initial thing of it, is that we continue to put $2,500 of money into the DDA for taking care of the flower bed area, and we take $500 to take care of the three that are outside of one of the park, one next to the side of the and then we're the one right next to you, more since of the three that are outside of that district. So, but that, that's all I have on So just kind of an awareness as we move forward. Uh, is, it, is, is the same person going to be in charge of next year that was in charge this year contacted with? I, I can't answer that because what, we, what we're doing, or at least my intention, is to allow the DDA to do the main areas and then we're going to contract their person that they're using to do the other. That would be my intention of doing it instead of having two different people. You would have to ask the DDA. Well, I just wanted because, you know, they were not in good shape this year, I didn't think. There was a lot of dead, dead flowers in there. Uh, they weren't good to look at too much grass in there or no grass. And I think uh, you need a good person to take care of the flower beds, not the same person. Now, that, I don't know if that doesn't fall within your talk. Right. Well, I, 
pre I, I appreciate the input on that, but I would I guess I would recommend that go to the EDA and yeah. talk to them so they can plan as they go forward and and, and work. And I'm sure that uh, even if it is the same person, that that kind of input would help them to maybe excel or, or improve upon what they were doing. Thank you. I submit that we may have gotten what we wanted to pay for. How much time do you have spent in? That may be the. Yeah. Well, there's no color to it. Mm -hmm. I walk the village every day. We, and we I decide how much we want to spend, how many flowers we want to buy, how much we want to spend on it. So, yeah. I don't know that, but I suspect that's what it is. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what's your flowers. I'm not a flower guy. What is it? Uh, Either this big bubble that we're going to drive around. Yeah, I want to know the language. <laughs> Yeah, just on behalf of the DBA, I managed the, the lady who took care of the flowers for the village this year, and a large portion of the labor spent was uh, taking care of flowers that weren't cut down the previous year in the fall, which caused more labor and, and in honor of keeping up with the budget, it was difficult to try to keep up on the grass and things like that that we definitely noticed um, going into next year if, if she receives the bid uh, for doing the work then there'll be less work to do because they've been cut down properly. website communication policy, written policy. Thank you. 
public hearings. It's been great support from the council, uh, unanimous support from the DDA board. I just I haven't had time to really review it in its entirety, so Downtown development and TIP plan as presented to the council on November 13th, 2014. 14, uh, ordinance number five of 2014. May I make a comment on behalf of the DBA? Okay. Okay. <coughs> second. Oh, second. Okay, motion made and seconded by Dr. Tyler. Uh, to approve the DDA development and TIF plan, that the uh, ordinance number five. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Motion carries. sure if this is the respectful time or not uh, but during our DDA meeting that we had a couple weeks ago as a board we unanimously agreed to present the changes that we made to the council um, but requested that the actual approval of the DDA plan and the TIF plan be approved by the new council um, because they would be the ones carrying forward the responsibilities of the budget so on and so forth um, so it's just a, a comment that I wanted to make in the fact that I'm not sure exactly how the approval process works and what exactly is on the table with you guys, but um, <clears throat> it, was, it was decided at the DDA and agreed upon that we would present it for approval to the new council, um, yet still present it to you guys as far as understanding what changes were made. Well, you've got your approval already now, so. <laughs> and like if, say the, that if the new board has any any questions or any concerns, I'm sure they'll not address that. Yes, I, I I'm, would be slightly question only if, when you say new board. The four of us that will still remain on the board. Melissa Zelnick will be coming to the board um, in December who helped create the TIP plan. So I'm pretty sure she's fully aware of everything in it. Um, and I'm sure Larry Eckert um, is a very smart man who is up to current um, uh, to doings within Central Lake. So I don't believe this is going to be anything that's new to anybody. And uh, so when, when you say the new board, we are the board still. No, I, I understand that. But during our meeting, um, it was agreed upon by the DBA uh, that it would go in front of the new board for approval. Just for whatever that's worth. So um, it means no disrespect to everybody who currently sits and how things shift. It was uh, it was a matter of, of for forward thinking. This this um, you know I, I think well, I could probably if that was the case you could probably throw that on me because when it came to us it wasn't put it on the the uh, agenda or it wasn't anything else. We talked last month or during the uh, public hearing that it would be approved at this meeting if um, it came to us. And when it showed up, I told Rachel to put it on the agenda and to move forward with it. So if there's any question about that, you throw that right back on me and start them off. No, it's no worries. I don't think it was our desire to slow the thing down. I think that uh, 
It was just making sure that everybody in the future was all together so that we don't right. you know, right. create we'll ripples. <clears throat> we don't tell you when to make votes, so we appreciate your vote. I think this is a good thing, and I, I appreciate everybody's hard work that did go into it, so thank you. Okay, any old business? Uh, well, under old business, we got, uh, no, no. You got an ace. That's it. That's it. Uh, we got any public comment? I got one. I would like to say thank you to Mr. Cruzy for, well, he's been on my board for eight years. He's been wonderful to work with it for eight years. Denise, you've been on the board for eight years. And I want to thank you for your time and effort that you put into it. Absolutely. And I welcome all the new members.